And if you thought this was another cheapo review, you're darn too. Yeah, this is another El Cheapo multimeter. Wow, this is a cheap one. I paid like five bucks Canadian for this. Five bucks Canadian. I mean, we're talking like what? Three dollars US? Insane, insane what you can get for a couple of bucks these days, I'm telling you. So is it really just a throwaway piece of garbage or does it actually have some use to it? Let's find out. The first thing I noticed when I picked up this meter is just how darned light it is. I mean, this guy is really light. You know, I've heard of light meters, had lots of light meters, but I mean, this guy just weighs nothing. So I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna weigh this guy. Okay, so we're gonna put him on the scale. Here we go. And we're looking at 112 grams, just over 100 grams. Wow. 0.2 pounds, 3.9 ounces. I mean, this guy weighs nothing. Wow. The ending meter is shipped with very little. In fact, next to nothing. No box, no manual. Came in a plastic little bag and with these leads. As far as the leads are concerned, they are definitely cheap. But you know what? I have seen cheaper. So there is a little bit of meat on these leads. And um, yeah, if I try the venerable pole test. Uh, uh, it's a pass. So that's a good thing. Um, definitely we're gonna use these leads for the review. I will pull out another better pair of leads when it comes to the continuity testing. But uh, yeah, that's what it ships with. So pretty generic. Cat 3, 1000 volt. Uh, I don't think so. But for general hobby style stuff, bench electronics should be fine. Now, Annie makes some pretty decent meters. You know, they're all over the place uh, when it comes to multimeters. They make some good stuff and some not so good stuff. We're all familiar with the uh, 8008 series, what have you. Um, really good bang for the buck. This is in a different league. What about the range switch, Darren? Is it any good? You know what, it's okay. Um, it starts off fine, then it gets on the mushy side in terms of longevity. Probably not gonna happen with this meter, but um, I've definitely seen worse, so that's a good thing. Now, if you notice, this meter does have something slightly different. This meter actually has a 1.5 volt battery checker, but it does it in a slightly different fashion. Um, there is a load being put on it, but the load is measuring the current draw as opposed to the voltage. Standard typical LCD screen. It ain't that bad though, as far as blase LCD screens go. I've definitely seen worse. The font size is acceptable. The clarity and brightness and contrast seem to be okay. Now the display is slightly recessed. There is a bit of a... Gosh, I'm all fingers today. There is a bit of a pocket here. Um, I don't know why it's recessed so deeply, but um, it's, it's not bad. Now it does have a backlight. Hit the backlight and whoa, that's bright. But unfortunately that backlight stays on for just a few seconds and then it's, uh, yeah, fades to darkness. Uh, so depressing when a backlight on a multimeter fades, isn't it? Oh God. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's quality-wise of the display, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say too much. It, it, it's okay. Once again, this is only a 2,000 count multimeter. Um, there is no bells and whistles. We have our standard hold, you know, you, you get a measurement and you have to physically hit the hold button. So, uh, yeah. The milliamp jack is being shared with the voltage and resistance. The current is on its own unfused jack. And once again, we're looking at a 200 milliamp um, max on the milliamp side. We'll test that out. And you know what? <gasps> maybe, just maybe we'll go higher than 200. Maybe we'll take it up to who knows what. Um, yeah, so uh, stay tuned guys. The fun has just begun. Shroud. Did somebody say shroud? You're talking to me? What the heck? Get no respect around here. The leads do go in nice and solid to the input jacks. 
no worries about slippage there. Um, that is a problem with a lot of cheapy multimeters. The test leads themselves just don't have a really good fit. This is the case. Actually, Anning did a decent job at least choosing leads that stay in appropriately. And we all know it's about being appropriate when it comes to cheapo multimeters. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a voltage accuracy test. And I'm gonna take out my favorite syscomp. Voltage reference. Now this only has two reference points, a 250 millivolt and a 2.50 volt. That voltage reference has been heating up for about 10 minutes now. And uh, yeah, we're pretty well at the 0 0.250 volt or 250 millivolt level in terms of the DC. So, so far, so good. Next, we're at 2.50 volts and it is a little bit of flutter, just like on the millivolt range, but 2.49, 2.50, uh, considering what this meter cost, I'll take it. Okay, sitting in milliamp mode, I'm using the Syscom PSM 101, which will be reviewed in a short while. This is a fantastic little low current output voltage power supply. All right, so here we are sitting at around 30 milliamps and no problem with the adding. Let's take it up to 70, 90, 100. And we're gonna bring up to 180. Remember we have a 200 milliamp threshold, 195, a boom. So that was it, 200 milliamps is all she wrote. So, okay. Now, Bring it back down and uh, yeah all is good so we have that 200 milliamp maximum too bad it was a little bit higher but uh, no problems there let's check out the amp side of things we're sitting at one amp currently and uh, let's just take it up a notch two amps now I am maxed out around 6.5 Four amps, five, six, and nope, oh, we're at four. We're not going to get any higher with that voltage. Take those volts up a little bit here. Okay, 5.5 amps. Sitting around 6.1 amps and we are at 6.22, close enough. Remember this is unfused, it is going only through the current shunt so you definitely do not want to have it uh, measuring current for too long. Next up it's diode mode, let's see how good the adding is at lighting them up and giving us a forward voltage drop indicator. Here we go, starting with the green LED, it is lighting it up but there is no forward voltage drop. The yellow is lit and no forward voltage drop. Um, the red is lit and no forward voltage drop. The white, the same. Oh, hang on. Did we get a forward voltage drop or was that? No, we didn't. Finally, the blue. We love you. <laughs> but we'd love you more if you gave us a forward voltage drop. Ha, anyway. Yeah, so. Oh, okay, well. Yeah, these leads, as you can see, um are starting to wear out. Uh, oh, there we go. Well, hey, that was just a matter of time. <sighs> so in terms of the LED indicator, yes, it does light them up, but it does not give us any forward voltage drop. Time for some new leads. For those inquiring minds that just need to know, according to my vintage dick, Smith multimeter. The output voltage in diode mode is a whopping 2.98 volts. So basically three volts diode output voltage. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. This only goes to a paltry two mega ohm. And let's just see if we can at least reach that. So survey says 1.97 mega ohm. Alrighty. And if we just try and increase it a little bit, yeah, we are definitely over 2.1 no so yeah maxed out at 2 mega ohm for resistance and eh, not too good next up we're looking at the battery testing mode this is um, a battery charge measurement indicator it's basically testing the amount of charge 
left in the 1.5 volt battery. I've got a uh, 1.5 volt Duracell here and we'll, we will take a look. So it's going to um, put a load um, and it will display to a resolution of 0.1 milliamps. And so about 36 milliamps showing up. So for a typical alkaline such as this, we should be seeing between 30 and 45. And yeah, we're right in the middle. So we've got a good battery. Continuity is next. Yes, you know, I love it. I know you love it. We all love it. It is music to our ears. God, I'm feeling poetic. It must be the spring. So these are the default probes. And um, yeah, let's try them out. Here we go. Oh, might help if we put it on continuity. Here we go. Wow, really scratchy, but really fast. So, hey, that actually isn't so bad. Hmm, this is a new set of Bryman leads that just came in, gold tipped, absolutely gorgeous probes. Let's try continuity with these guys. Wow, night and day. So there you have it, a good set of probes really, really changes things. Um, awesome body the chassis is you know definitely on the cheap side um there's no rubber anywhere it's just that cheap plasticky feeling um so if you drop it probably would not do too well on the back you do have the uh, one plastic hole here where the um screw holds the retainer for the 9 volt battery and it is uh, just plastic so that's not going to uh, do too well in the long run either Okay, let's take this guy apart. Okay, we've got the insides out. Um, kind of interesting. We do have your standard split style uh, input jacks here. Um, yeah, these are really cheaply done. Um, very, very thin metal filaments. At least the soldering job is not so bad, but uh, yeah, not much else going on with the input jacks. We do have our one large, long current shunt over here. And once again, the uh, current side is not fused, so that's all you have. Um, on the milliamp side, we do have a 250 volt um, fuse, uh, 0.2 amps, so 200 milliamps. Now that is a pig style, pig style, a, a pigtail fuse. Um, so if you blow the fuse, you're gonna have to desolder and then uh, resolder in the new fuse. Um, Hmm, let's try to get a close-up of that rating of the fuse itself. Uh, let's see here. I double-checked that pigtail fuse. That's actually a 500 milliamp pigtail. So, yeah, you can definitely uh, do a little bit better um, without worrying about having to blow it and change it all the time. So, um, your readings will stop, but at least you're not going to blow the fuse if you go over that uh, 200 milliamp range. But once again, these pigtail fuses, they're a dime a dozen eBay, what have you. I could literally get packs of 20, 30 for a couple of bucks, so uh, no big deal. All right, here we have a nice big piezo, and it is just taped to the PCB. Rev date on the PCB is June 25th, 2018, and yeah, not much else going on here. Um, no other forms of input protection whatsoever. We do have one diode here for the reverse diode polarity in case you put the battery in the wrong way. Um, but little else. Main IC is cobbed. We do have one LM358, a dual op amp over here. Um, something else that's a little weird, the LCD display, um, they've got two metal filaments. So instead of just, uh, regular wire they've actually got two metal filaments here um, probably better in the long term um, and those are soldered in there pretty darn well so instead of utilizing your standard uh, skinny gauge wire they've got uh, two metal filaments feeding that display so that's actually pretty good as you can see the PCB itself is very tiny um, yeah not much to it okay come back with closing thoughts
Closing thoughts on the inning, A at 82-02. You know, honestly, it's okay. And it is what it is. It doesn't do capacitance. Um, has a lousy resistance range. Build quality is kind of on the poor side. Um, if you drop this, it's probably going to be toast. Good side, well, you know what? Has that great continuity. Quite surprising, but it is fast. And uh, in terms of accuracy, it seemed to be pretty darn good. Um, really, it's not something you're going to throw on the bench. At least I wouldn't. I think this is a great meter for the car or the toolbox. But uh, then again, it is super cheap, you know, around seven bucks. So what can you say? It's a cheap old multimeter. I wish it did a little bit more, and I wish the build quality was a little bit better. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give the Anning AM8202 a solid three out of four. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Keep those comments and suggestions coming. And don't be shy. If you have anything you want to talk about or multimeters you'd like to see me review, please drop me a line. Hey, it's always fun when there's new multimeters in the run. Till the next time, keep on testing. What, what does that mean, in the run multimeters? Ah, it doesn't matter.